Welcome back. You're in the C-Space studio here at CES 2024. I am James Kotecki, joined by Brett McNichol, Senior Technologist, Kubota North America. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So uh, Kubota has an exhibit, or a, a big space, a big tent pavilion uh, here at CES 2024. But for those who aren't able to come to that pavilion or to be at the show, what does the brand mean? Can you just kind of define the company a little bit? Yeah, Kubota is very excited. This is our first year exhibiting at CES. Kubota has been around for over 130 years, developing uh, solutions for society's big problems. And so Kubota believes that technology's role is really creating solutions for big challenges in food, water, and the environment. And that's what we're about. Yeah. So the exhibit is showing uh, how technology comes together to provide solutions in a residential setting. So we're looking at residential farmer with a few acres and a vineyard mm. in this particular case. Mm -hmm. But we're also unveiling uh, one of the, one of the uh, key technologies, and that's the automation. So we have the new Agra concept in our booth. It's an electric vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, ground up built as an EV, six independent uh, motors, but can still, it still has the versatility to pull all the implements that you would need uh, for mm -hmm. uh, a farming operation. Yeah. And so automation's going a long way, it's bringing data and then the AI together. And that's what we're showing at the exhibit today. Mm -hmm. The other part of it is just introducing ourselves. It's our first time here, yeah. so you'll learn Welcome. a little bit yeah. about uh, Kubota and the yeah. history of Kubota and these challenges that uh, we're facing. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about farming on a residential scale. Sometimes it's called smallholder farming. Is right. that is that kind of um, is that a, a big focus for um, Kubota? That's I assume that's relatively intentional. It is intentional. Uh, Kubota is well known for compact utility tractors. Mm -hmm. That's a space that uh, we're comfortable in. We know a yeah. lot about what the customers are going through and their pain points. As a matter of fact, we're going to have customers in our booth uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. morning, talking about how they use uh, Kubota technology yeah. today and Kubota equipment today, but also what challenges they're facing and how the technology yeah. and bringing together AI and automation is necessary mm -hmm. to continue to support the lifestyle that they yeah. want to live. So it's very intentional. And you talked about this electric uh, vehicle. I mean, are we, is, it, is it fair to call that a tractor? Is it, is it kind of an all-purpose farming yeah. piece of equipment that you can just put different things on and you can achieve different farming goals? Can you give a little bit more there? Yeah, we took the name uh, New Agri Concept just because it has so much more versatility mm -hmm. than a tractor because you're bringing together sensors and automation. So it is a fully autonomous uh, vehicle. You can see that in the, yeah. the video. Um, and so we're bringing together the data, the, uh, the uh, autonomy, as well as the ability, that versatility you're talking about and, and using the different implements. Mm -hmm. So you can use this, uh, this type of a vehicle for uh, operations such as mowing, tilling, and uh, uh, no, a large array of different um, uh, uh, different operations, yeah. different tasks. So it does have that versatility that goes a little bit beyond a tractor. Yeah. The tractors today don't have uh, the, the smarts, and so we wanted to set it you know, in a, its own segment. That makes sense. I mean, it, it, it's a branding challenge, and I suppose it's a branding opportunity yeah. as well. I mean, if you think about a phone, you know, that could have meant something in 1972, right. and it means something very different here in 2024, um, but we still use the same brand for it. So right. I, wonder, I wonder if some people uh, may still call it a tractor in the future, but it might actually mean something totally different. Um, I noticed uh, your pin, um, and your pin is, um, I believe, talking about the UN uh, yes. sustainability or the UN uh, overall goals. Um, yep. And uh, this is an important aspect of CES. It has been for a couple of years here. Human security, how technology can enable uh, people to live better lives across a number of dimensions. Um, sustainability, food security, regenerative agriculture, all that is kind of under that umbrella. Um, how does Kubota think about all these things? Kubota is very passionate about uh, sustainability, security. That's uh, a actually one of the reasons why we like to be here. Yeah. It's a very purpose-driven company. Mm -hmm. And so food security, water, clean access to clean water, you'll see that in the booth as well. Yeah. So all of this is really critical to what we're doing. And a matter of fact, that's part of the conversation that we want to have, is how do we focus the technology more on solving some of these major societal problems, such as food security, yeah. water, and then the environment. And so we have elements and how those come together mm -hmm. shown in our booth. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that your vehicle has a lot of sensors on it. Can you can you give us a bit of a tour of the different kinds of data that you're able to capture from the world around, and uh, and how that actually uh, gets fed into the the machine to actually help it make yeah. decisions? So yeah, I want to put it in context here. So uh, the new Agri Concept is a concept vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a test ground for what we're doing. Yeah. 
And what we're exploring is uh, the different sensor suites that are necessary to yeah. really solve problems. Our focus is on solving the problem mm -hmm. uh, that the, the customer has. Mm -hmm. And different sensors that we're looking at, perception sensors, mm -hmm. uh, as well as sensors for obstacle detection and, and you know, functional safety. Yeah. In terms of things that you're, you can look at today, it's looking at uh, the color uh, and the health of the, the leaves and the crop. Yeah. Looking at the, the crop itself, for instance, uh, in the, exam in the uh, exhibit that we have, uh, we're focused on vineyards. So it's looking mm -hmm. at the, the grapes and the clustering of grapes. Sure. Providing a farmer with a lot more information that they can be more efficient in their, uh, mm -hmm. in their operations. It's also part of sustainability is reducing the inputs, mm -hmm. reducing fertilizers, you know, reducing w and better uh, managing water resources. Yeah. So that's part of what we're trying to do as well. So it's not just the vehicle, mm -hmm. Kubota is really trying to expand out and provide whole solutions because that's mm -hmm. what's needed to solve these yep. complex problems. And how do you think about the way that farmers and growers actually take up this technology? Because you can obviously invent some pretty incredible stuff, but you also have to make it easy to use or at least easy enough to kind of integrate it into uh, the lives and the work that people are already doing. I assume that's a big part of the thought process. It's a, it is, um, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's incredibly important that we bring the technology to the growers and not make them compromise or try to adapt to the technology. Yeah. And so a lot of the thought that's going in to uh, the technology Kubota is producing is how do we make it attractive so that we can get the adoption, which will lead to uh, the uh, benefits for society, right? And you can't get those unless you get people to use them. And a lot of technology is out there, but uh, requires some level of compromise or excessive training. We don't want uh, growers to have to go get a degree in engineering in order to use this equipment. Right. Um, does it feel like you're doing um, something on the range of, of sci-fi ever? I mean, as, as, you, as you're testing out these things, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the movie Interstellar, which famously <laughs> had some drones out there on a farm. and Drones um, and combines, exa yeah. Exactly, and, 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 and do, you, do you, I guess I'm, I'm just curious, like, do you, do you imagine that kind of sci-fi future, maybe it's a distant future, but maybe one that you're working toward of some kind of fully autonomous farm? Or, you know what, let me pull this question back. When you think about the future, what vision drives you? I mean, the driven, what we're driven by, we're really customer centric. It's really mm -hmm. understanding that problem and making sure that we're yeah. solving it. And we've got challenges right now in labor and water that we need to solve yeah. in order to feed the growing population. Mm -hmm. That's what we're really focused on. Yeah. But in terms of the sci-fi and the question, seeing the advancements we're able uh, to achieve today, it is quite rewarding, and it's—I mean—it's yeah. an exciting. It's exciting to be yeah. part of this. And now you're bringing—you've got enough data collection in agriculture mm -hmm. that you're starting to be able to use artificial intelligence and bring the AI and automation together in a way that is really going to change the yeah. way that farming is done in the very—I yeah. would say—near future yeah. than further out. It's really coming mm -hmm. together. I think this is a really good point. So to invent the sci-fi future, you don't necessarily need to have some sci-fi vision. You need to focus on the customer. customer. And in so doing, by solving those problems, which you've said over and over again, and it makes a lot of sense, that's how you actually get to that future. You definitely want to focus on the customer. Without the adoption, without providing real value for the customer, you, you're not going to get the adoption, right? And then yeah. you can't make that change. Yeah. And trying to build up you know, that, that future world all at once, you need all of the pieces to work yeah. together. So yeah. how, how do we get there? And it's yeah. going to be incremental. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been shown in other markets, right, mm -hmm. on, on the autonomy is yeah. you start to add more and more sensors and more and more autonomous features and then slowly, slowly mm -hmm. work your way up to yeah. uh, the full autonomous yeah. that you'd see in Interstellar. Um, we're here at uh, CES, of course, which has so many interesting technologies on display. Is there something, maybe it's here at CES or beyond, that is kind of catching your eye, something on the horizon, you're thinking, oh, if, if that other technology develops, I wonder how it could intersect with the things that we're building. There's not one particular technology I'm looking at. Uh, it's really how do we bring them together? I mean, that's what's going to change. A lot of the technology that is uh, currently available, it just needs to be brought together in a way that mm -hmm. the growers can, can yeah. consume it. And so I'm looking at that. Now on the perception side and then the artificial intelligence side, those are the two areas where I think when you cross, you're gonna mm -hmm. get a big unlock. Yeah. It's getting the right access to data in the agricultural space. And mm -hmm. that's been a, a, a holdback, I think, mm -hmm. in agriculture, because you only have so many access, you know, so many times where you have access yes. to the crop data. Mm -hmm. And so how do we build up that database? And then you can tie it with artificial intelligence and then layer mm -hmm. on the automation. Then you're gonna have a tremendous unlock. 
Well, I hope that you're having a fantastic first year at CES. We hope to have you back at CES and back in the C-Space studio. Brett McMickle, Kubota, North America, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Really it's great to be here. It. And we appreciate you watching. I'm James Kotecki. We're here in the C-Space studio, sponsored by Integral Ad Science. More great conversations are just ahead. Don't go anywhere.